Hey, how's it going? So, I moved my microphone a little bit closer. Hopefully, the audio quality is way better now. Anyway, I made a massive list of all of the most helpful Linux and command line related resources that I know of. So, sites and tools and programs, basically anything that has helped me learn or understand Linux and the command line. To start with, I wanted to highlight what I think is potentially the most important, which is Supergrub to Disk. This has saved me in a pinch twice now where I couldn't boot into my system and it was like at a really critical time. I had to get back in, Grub had broken. Supergrub to Disk is going to allow you to boot back in. It's going to manually scan your boot and entries and allow you to get back in if something is seriously wrong. So this is something I now keep on a USB stick basically at all times. I've just got a USB stick with this ready to boot up if worst case scenario happens. Um, the same people make something called Rescatox, which uh, I guess if you're a Windows user, you're welcome here too, of course. And uh, this is really useful for anybody. It doesn't matter whether you're on Windows or Linux because this has basically all of the key and critical utilities you would need for system rescue, whether Linux or Windows. So yeah, this is pretty useful. This is a site for your best commands and command pipeline. So like if you've got some really good awk pipeline that you're always using, you can upload it here. And likewise, a lot of people have uploaded all sorts of pipelines, both for like classic stuff like, you know, awk and sed and grep, but also for more unique stuff as well, like watching movies in your terminal or like sorting by IP address, querying Wikipedia over DNS. This is one of those sites that like I'm always returning to. Okay, so I am pretty convinced that if somebody had to learn Linux from absolute zero and they wanted to become a professional, they could do it with just this website. This website has everything from really detailed guides that you could either read online or download in different formats, all the way to documentation and man pages and, you know, how to do stuff on Linux. There's an advanced bash scripting guide, there's Linux on laptops, there's system administration, there's like beginner Linux, there is all sorts of stuff here. So yeah, if you need one website to really learn Linux, like hardcore learn Linux, this is the site to learn it from. The ArchWiki and the GentooWiki, as well as the Debian Wiki actually, are probably the best available wikis, not just if you're using and trying to learn these distributions, but just for programs in general. For example, the ArchWiki has a great page about FFmpeg with all sorts of examples, and it also links back to all sorts of other stuff, which is one of the best features a wiki can have, right? Linking back to the original pages and other extended information if you're really trying to learn something. So yeah, the Arch Wiki is what I always reference, but I did also want to mention, you know, the Gentoo Wiki, the Debian Wiki as well are really, really good. Okay, let's jump into the command line real quick for one of the most helpful sites that I know of, and that is a site that I actually made a video about a long time ago. It is not technically Linux related, but it is directly on the command line, so I think it fits here. It is the site that I use for weather to put weather in my taskbar, and that is wttr.in. So if I just curl wttr.in, that's going to do my local weather based on my IP address. Um, but I can also just give it a place here so I can do like, uh, I don't know, Svalbard or something. And yeah, if I zoom out a little bit, it'll actually fit it on the terminal here. Yeah, so that's Svalbard's weather, three-day forecast. And WTTR.in also allows you to use all sorts of different flags to reformat your weather. So if you want like any sort of custom weather report, this is the site to use. A few resources with regards to shell scripting. First of all, I want to point out the Pure SH Bible and Pure Bash Bible. Both of them are by Dylan Araps and you can find them on GitHub, though I will link everything in the description. Um, basically, it's just a guide for how to do external processes in either Pure Bash or Pure SH. This one's Pure SH, and this is useful for two different reasons, okay? Either you want to actually learn how to do these particular processes, so for example, like you want to parse a key and value file in Pure POSIX SH, or you want to create an empty file without any external commands, without the touch command, right? All of this is possible in pure SH. So this is really cool just to learn how it works. But beyond that, if you just want to learn shell scripting, right? Like I think this is one of the best ways to do it. Learning how to do external stuff in pure shell, that is how to learn shell scripting. Shell check is a must have if you're doing a lot of shell scripting or if you're just learning how to shell script. Um, I think you can just install it like as a normal package. Um, I, I don't know why I'm using it on the site. I think it's just under shell check. I believe. Yeah, it's under shell check. Um, you can also put it in NeoVim as a linter, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I think you can. Um, but yeah, I generally just like, if I'm struggling with a shell script and I don't know why there's an error with it, I will paste it in here. It's going to tell you what the error is. Um, it's also going to tell you if there's any warnings in terms of best practices. Like if you're doing like a quote wrong, it will let you know. So yeah, this is really useful. 
I want to point out two people's websites that have really, really useful information on them. First of all, Rod Smith, who is actually the person who made the refined bootloader, which I'll talk about in a second. He has a huge page on his website uh, that goes over booting from UEFI versus BIOS systems, and this explains it really well, and I feel like it explains it in a way that you'll be able to understand it even if you're not super familiar with these concepts, which is like, okay, UEFI versus BIOS is probably something you should be aware of if you're running Linux, so if you don't understand how it works. This is the page to go to to really get a good understanding of it. But Rod Smith is the person who made the refined bootloader. So um, I have an MSI motherboard and notoriously Grub does not play well with MSI. I've had a number of issues related to Grub just not working with my motherboard. So refined actually works fine on my motherboard. So yeah, I've been using refined as a bootloader for a long time now and I've actually found it works great. So anyways, yes, this is the person who made refined and I think he has a bunch of other tools he's made as well. Now, I also wanted to mention uh, Brendan Gregg's website. He's got a lot of stuff related to Linux performance and benchmarking and testing, that sort of stuff, which is actually how I found his website. He's got a number of other things on here that are just interesting reads. Um, do I have the page open? No, I don't. Uh, Linux performance. Uh, yeah, so he's got a number of really good charts just explaining how things work. Obviously, this is something really technical, and I'm absolutely not going to claim to understand all of this, but I do think it is an interesting read, and if you're trying to understand Linux performance and benchmarking, this is pretty useful. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention man pages. Your system manual pages are probably the most useful offline resource you have. You can get a man page for virtually any command. So if I pull up the man of ZSH here, this is going to be a full documentation of how the ZSH shell works, how to use it, how to invoke the command. Um, and something that I feel like a lot of people miss when it comes to man pages is you have a see also section at the bottom here, which is really, really useful because it's going to tell you all of the related man pages you can look at. So so you'll see I have, you know, SH is in the see also section as well as bash. Um, I actually have KSH installed right now since I was testing something on it recently. So yeah, all of this stuff is related to ZSH and this is going to always appear at the bottom of a man page, which is really, really useful. There's also a miniature, in quotes, version of man pages, which is TLDR pages. This is a separate program and you can install it. I have a TLDR a version of TLDR pages installed. It's a client for TLDR. And I could do like TLDR of ZSH. And this is just going to be like a miniature summary of the man page, basically. Um, it's really useful for stuff like, uh, for example, the DD command, where you just want to double check that you have the syntax right so that you don't like erase your disk, you know? That's what TLDR really comes in handy for, in my opinion. Just double checking on things like syntax or basic use. If you just forgot, you know, what order does my IF and OF go in for DD? Well, I can just do the TLDR of DD. So yeah, this is really useful. Another really useful site that you can curl directly from your command line is cheat.sh, which is a little bit more fleshed out than TLDR and it also has more topics. So if I want to do like curl cheat.sh uh, bash, for example, this is going to tell me all sorts of stuff about bash, about scripting and about the shell. Like for example, how do I do case statements in bash? Well, that's how I do a case statement. And this is really useful. Like if you want just a really quick reference of like, oops, I forgot the syntax for a, a case statement or how to do a for loop in bash, right? You can just curl this page and it's just going to immediately give you it. And obviously this is a lot faster than trying to go find a website that's going to detail this for you because this is right on your command line. And if you're already writing a script or you're writing a command, well, you can just go ahead and curl it and it's right there at your fingertips. If you want a real understanding of what goes in all of your base system directories, so your root directory structure, your system hierarchy, this is the site for it. It is the official site that's going to describe exactly what goes in each of these various directories. It's going to describe the purpose, so why the directory exists, a bit about the history of the directory at times, and exactly what's going to go in that directory. Um, I made a whole video going over the root system structure, and what did I do? I went through this site. You might not have expected to see over the wire on here if you're familiar with it, but I had to put it on here because I actually used this site a lot back in the day to get more familiar with the command line. So this site, I guess, is intended to be for anybody trying to learn pen testing and cybersecurity. But in general, if you're just trying to learn Unix or Linux, this is really good because, I mean, the first game is just Unix and Linux basics. What it's going to do, you're going to SSH into their server and you're going to play their puzzle games and, you know, get to the next like level in the game by completing the puzzles. And it's Gonna teach you all of these concepts but it's really fun because it's in like a gamified sort of way and this is just one of the best sites if you're just trying to learn this kind of stuff. If you don't already know about these, this is about to completely change the way you seek out information regarding 
all sorts of different topics. This is the Awesome Lists. It's a page on GitHub, though there are site mirrors of it as well, and it is a community-maintained list of lists on all sorts of various topics. A lot of these are somewhat computer-related, but it is a wide range of topics, and every single list here is just going to have a sublist of sublists of all sorts of various things with links to, you know, anything you need to learn about the topic, applications, programs, tools, sometimes books and courses, any helpful links related to the topic. And for example, there is a huge list about Linux in general. It's got stuff like distributions, learning resources, desktop environments, applications, and these are all sub lists. So these don't just link to one place. It's another list of more stuff related to it. So if you're trying to learn about like any of these big umbrella topics, just go click on them and you will have so many more resources all through these various topics. The last thing I want to share with you is not another website or resource or program, but if you're going to take away anything from this video, this is what you should take away. You are capable of learning whatever you put your mind to. You only need two things. You need patience and you need practice. And if you're patient with yourself and you keep practicing whatever it is, even if you feel like you're learning slower than other people, even if you feel like you're just naturally unskilled at the given topic, none of that matters. If you're patient with yourself and you keep practicing, you can learn and excel at anything.